A visit to the studio of Chris Dolman is like entering some chaotic creative laboratory. Printmaker, painter, multimedia artist, Chris's work defies definition. He thrives on exploration yet finds his inspiration in his neighborhood. In fact, he often focuses on one particular block of Argyle Street in the heart of Port Alberni's Arts District. What may be mundane to others, Chris sees and expresses in hundreds of different ways. Argyle Street is, is sort of that shape and at the top you've got Arrowsmith. Well, that's, a, that's an amazingly beautiful image. And um, it's a lovely contrast, sort of slowly coming down the street, getting more and more busy. And then at the bottom, and this is a bit unfortunate, we've got industry. But, you know, industry is industry. Chris was born in Wales, but spent much of his growing up years in the small English village of Norfolk. He spent much of his time drawing and painting. The only child of a single mother, Chris often spent time in the company of his grandfather, who was a painter. At the age of 12, Chris created this amazingly sophisticated oil painting of the village, including the house in which he lived. First time I was <laughs> confronted with what I had to do was about six months before I left high school. So I had to think about it, and I wanted to be all sorts of things. Uh, vet and then I was told I didn't have the science and then I wanted to be an architect and I didn't have the math and uh, so one of my aunts then said well what about art school you're always drawing and painting and things I said well no it's art school so I looked into it and there we go so I ended up in Hornsey College of Art. Swinging 60s in London it was amazing yeah Twiggy, Mary Quant, kitchen sink drama, pop, pop art, the Beatles, the Stones. Following his graduation from art school, Chris decided to continue his education at teacher training college. The 60s were a time of change and Chris chose to leave England seeking a new life. I tailed it to Canada. Uh, I decided that uh, it was, they weren't paying teachers enough and I didn't like the class system in Britain so uh, came over and it was a good time I was told by BC House oh just arrive with your teaching credentials and you'll get a job and sure enough uh, I had a choice of 16 <laughs> teaching positions when I arrived two weeks after term had begun in September of uh, 67. In the late 1960s teaching jobs were plentiful in Canada and this offered Chris an opportunity to experience life in several of BC's coastal communities. He also attended the University of Victoria for a degree in fine arts and completed his studio masters in San Miguel, Mexico, a well-known artistic center. For a year to do that was a wonderful year too, absorbing the Mexican landscape. Chris returned to his career in teaching on Vancouver Island in Sydney, working there through to his retirement. While that area is renowned for its rich artistic community, Chris observed. Yes, it is. Um, it's, uh, Alberni is just as creative and, and uh, rich in, in art. In fact, I can name people that are basically in almost every medium that you can imagine in this town and almost every style that you can imagine. Um, professional artists moving here and you know amateur artists or people retiring and taking up art and it's just it's sort of more exciting people don't bring so much baggage with them uh, here it seems that it's a sort of a pioneer attitude. Experimentation seems to be key to Chris Dolman's art and his process. He has a solid reputation as a painter but has always enjoyed exploring different forms of printmaking, particularly collagraphs, often using them as an element in his paintings. I have a constant battle in my mind about realism and abstraction. And it's, uh, you know, it, it, what do you do? So I look upon realism as a restriction sometimes because, you know, I want to paint a tree 
but I don't want to make it green, I want to make it something else, or I want to make a shape and it turns into a tree or something. Um, so I look upon it as a little bit of a hindrance, but there again, abstract art, if you're trying to make up shapes all the time, that's, that's a problem, you know. Oh God, what, what different shape can I put in here and so on. So it's a battle, but it's, that's part of it. I think that's, that's what make artists what they are. Chris is known as a prolific artist, so it was a surprise to learn he sometimes experiences periods when he is not creating. Well, I get, I don't do art for two or three weeks or a month occasionally, but I don't look upon it as a block. It's, it's a time, I just let my, my mind mull over and create new things, and it's, it's probably a good thing. You know, it's like sleeping, you dream all sorts of wonderful things. Chris has embraced technology, and his process often involves using a computer. So there's the leaf. It was a photograph mm -hmm. of a leaf in the snow, actually. When I have it there, then I can send it to uh, the cutter. And when we get it out, look at the edge of the leaf and how how it's uh, picked up every nuance. And uh, so the important thing to me is that. I can do stuff that I couldn't do otherwise. No. So these, these were all cut on there and then glued down, <coughs> you know, anywhere. So I use the, the negative and, and I use positives. And um, this, this is a color graph. All the printmaking that I do is um, relief printmaking. I don't, none of this is etching or intaglio or screen printing. It's all relief printing. And there's a slight texture there and then there's something else on top. So all of that picks up ink uh, in different ways and in, in surprising ways. It's, it's a little bit like Raku pottery, this, because I don't know how that's gonna turn out until I've taken the first print. These are positive areas. And I could use these. I produced lots of little paper men and women, and uh, you know I could glue them anywhere I wanted. So you can see how the surface, the, the, the things that are blackest are the things uppermost. That noise, that's a lovely noise, and that's what oil-based inks do. And up until fairly recently, water cleanup inks wouldn't, couldn't do that. They, they, they were too thin. So. Keep, keep putting new ink on the roller. It should look like velvet. All right, so on the press and some paper. Now this isn't good printing paper, it's just bond, which I do for a test one if I was printing this for the first time. This is, um, this is a felt blanket, and it's, it's hundreds of years uh, old, been used felt to do this. We haven't got a modern equivalent of anything that works better. So I'm just going to run this through now. So it's going to go through, and then, then I can tell the pressure by how much resistance there is. I think I'm going to get a little bit more pressure on the roller. And then we're going to come back through. So usually I look at the back of the paper, and if I can see a little indentation, I sort of know that it's roughly right. You'd never be able to do this by hand, by pressing on it, because this is many hundreds of pounds per square inch. And then you can just check it. Okay, so it's where I've meant it to be, it's not a bad print. But you can see how the edges, I didn't do the edges. And that's, uh, that's the example of this block printed. It'll be the other way around, of course. So, and that actually is a print of uh, Argyle Street. Seeing what's going on is kind of you know, my way of inter interacting with life, uh, one of them is, is doing art. And um, 
So yeah, my surroundings influence me, but why, how, and why, I don't know. I just do it. It's um, just something that uh, is a starting point. Without a starting point, it would be not good. Thank you.